Fat Rom. This is Fat Rom's pumpkin tattoo. Right there, baby. <laughs> this was the first legal tattoo shop in Boston. It was quite a it was quite a journey. We did a lot of the hard work necessary to, you know, to be the first shop to open and I think it helped show just the general public and other landlords that a tattoo studio is a respectable business. As long as I've known Rom, he's been a very good artist. This dude would like draw on everything. Rom is also an incredible skateboarder and in the late 80s, he was getting up in all the magazines, and if he chose that route instead of tattoos, he would have gone just as far as a professional skateboarder. Well, I started really working hard at it in 88. I did an, a very informal apprenticeship with a professional skateboarder named Fred Smith III. I pretty much like learned from somebody who was tattooing underground in the first place. And Fred Smith gave me this ankle band when I was 18 years old in 1990. And uh, the rest was history after that. Rom started tattooing more and more. I continued to tattoo underground in Boston until it was legalized. I held, I held licenses in other states and I tattooed uh -huh. legitimately in other states, but I always tattooed underground. And I would travel in order to gather the information and meet the best people in the world and, and get, get, gather some influences. And then I'd come home to my clients who were really open-minded to me experimenting and, uh, and allow, that allowed me to really progress in, a, in an envelope that was kind of outside of what was popular in tattooing at the time. He's definitely a master of his craft. He has a very diverse style. He does not, you can't just pigeonhole him into one thing. He can do anything. If you want a certain style, he can bust out very well with it, whether it's a portrait in black and white or some bugged out new school piece or some traditional design. His library is immense. Yeah, and he's familiar with all styles, and he's definitely a nerd about tattooing. I want that spark to come from the customer. I want them to have an idea. I want them to come to me because they have some drive to get this image. We respect everyone that comes in, even if their idea is for a little Taz. So there's some real simple beauty with somebody who wants a Tweety or the, or the Taz. You know, For somebody to actually want the Taz bad enough to get me to do it, they have to really want the Taz. They're gonna have to leave a deposit, they're gonna have to wait 10 months, and they're gonna have to still want that same image, you know what I mean, when they come to get tattooed by me. If somebody's prepared to go through that, and they're gonna spend money, and the tattoo's gonna hurt. If they're prepared to go through all that, and they still want just the Taz, like that would do it, then I'm gonna do the best Taz I ever did. I, I try to encourage people to get stuff from their own lives, from their own experience, something that'll have something to do with some, have some, maybe some inner or outward meaning for them. That's part of what's awesome about collecting tats, you know. You, it's it's a, an outward projection of your life's journey.